back to Oklahoma Senate On Deck. I'm Aaron Cooper with Oklahoma Senate Republican Communications, and as always, we're joined by Senator Greg Treat. Senator, glad to have you here. How's it going? It's going really well, uh, except I can't hear out of my left ear, as I keep talking about. Well, that's the reason I have you on my left. <laughs> that's right. That way you can hear everything I say. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of these days, we'll be happy to report that hearing's out of both sides, so look forward to that <laughs> yeah. day. Uh, we just wrapped up week three as we record this. Uh, some uh, some great things happened this week, uh, but I hate to start off on a slightly unpositive note, but uh, let's talk first about the, the Board of Equalization and how that impacts the budget. And so for people that don't know at home, the Board of Equalization stands for, or BOE stands for Board of Equalization. And that's Board in, of Equalization stands for BOE. That's right. <laughs> I'll get it right one of these days. <laughs> yeah. uh, we always strive to improve, as we say around here. That's the reason you're a communications director. That's right. Uh, that's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the group of people, uh, statewide elected officials that meet, and they certify how much revenue the state has to spend, and that's the number that we got this week that the legislature used to write the budget. So uh, tell us a little bit about what they reported and what that may mean for the budget moving forward. Yeah, as some may recall, back in December, they had a preliminary estimate of revenues, but the, the revenue estimate that we used to set the budget is this February estimate that just happened this week. Right. We're, we're recording this on Friday, and it happened earlier this week. Right. Showed us $85.5 million down off of what we had to spend last year. And that sounds like a big number, but the, the total amount of money we're talking about in the budget is around... $7 billion, roughly, right. uh, on the appropriated. And then we've come in, I've come down uh, as much as $1.3 billion down. That yeah. was not a fun experience. Right. Since you've been in the legislature. I don't want to gloss over it. 85.5 is concerning because that means people have lost jobs. They're not spending money in the economy. Uh, so it is a real concern that I have, uh, that all legislators have. But we also had about $150 million thereabouts of one-time spending last right. year. So we're still in good shape. We've got about $2 billion in savings, including the $200 million we set aside atop that, what we had to do That has proven year. to be wiser and wiser as the days goes on, what the Senate and the House and the governor did last year, saving yeah, back money. Absolutely. And I have to give the governor a lot of credit. He's pushing it from, for it from the very beginning, uh, and we, we locked arms on that, and I'm glad we did. We took a lot of flack for that. Right. A lot of people were saying, yeah, you could have spent that $200 million here, there, elsewhere, and they're all worthwhile projects, but you've got to be uh, responsible fiscally, and I'm glad that we, we didn't take the bait last year. Right, and like you said, uh, you've been here as a legislator during times when we were short $1.3 billion, $700 million, not $85 million. All large numbers, but you can got to get a sense of that. And for a quick shout-out to another product we do here in Senate Communications, Budget Breakdown with Senator Roger Thompson, our appropriations chair. We've talked about one-time spending and what that means, and the flexibility that it could provide as we write next year's budget with this uh, shortfall coming. Yeah, up. and Senator Thompson does an excellent job on that. Uh, I encourage everyone to listen to that to get a deeper dive on our appropriations process. And speaking of Senator Thompson, he and the budget chairs in the Senate subcommittee appropriations chairs have been working nonstop. They meet uh, once a week during session. They're meeting constantly with agencies, digging down really getting in a sense for what those priorities are and helping inform. And, and their work didn't start two and a half weeks right. ago when session started. Yeah. They, their work really started after we passed last year's budget. Uh, they started working. So the budget we're currently funding government on is the 2020 fiscal year 2020. Right. The budget we're working on t through legislative process right now is fiscal year 2021, which will start July 1. Honestly, after FY20 budget was passed, they started working on FY21 yeah. Yeah. already. Uh, the work goes on nonstop around here from every member of the, the, the Senate and the staff. We may not be in session passing bills, but we're always doing our research. We're, we're meeting with uh, the agencies and tackling these weighty issues we, we talk about here at the Capitol. And the vast majority of our time spent talking on budget. Right, because that's, like you always remind everyone, that's our number one charge from the Constitution is to, to write a balanced budget every year. Yeah, it doesn't get as much ink in the papers <laughs> or, uh, you know, virtual ink on, online, but it's extremely important. It's what we focus the vast majority of our time on. Another important thing we do uh, in the Senate, and, and this week uh, Senator Treat had a couple of bills pass out of committee. The committee uh, process is well underway. We've got one more week of committee work here in the Senate. You had a couple of bills passed this week, one in the Transportation Committee, one in the General Government Committee. Let's talk first about the uh, the bill in the Transportation Committee. It's something you're working on with closely with the governor. Tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, actually both bills that I passed last week are, are ideas that the governor and I are working together on. The first one that you asked me to talk about on transportation 
is simply putting the Turnpike Authority under the Department of Transportation. They have very similar missions, uh, similar uh, funding mechanisms. Right. We have to be careful when we do it, though, because we can't jeopardize the bonding uh, capacity of Turnpike Authority. And so we're, I, it's a procedural move, but it's sure. an important procedural move. I took the title off of that bill uh, because it's truly a work in progress. And I hope we can get it done. They already have a lot of shared services agreements between right. the two agencies. We can find some efficiencies, but more more importantly, we can align missions and really think strategically for Oklahoma's transportation future uh, if we have those two entities together. I think that's important, and trans the transportation infrastructure is so important to, to public safety, but also economic development. We talk about that a lot here at the Capitol, and it makes sense as a taxpayer driving down the road to align those uh, priorities and the mission and assault truck on the turnpike seems to work just as well as a assault truck on the interstate so seeing those shared agreements looks like s something exciting moving forward well so. i think it's gonna be big but we've got to get it right yeah I, I, the reason i took the title off again procedural but it just uh, keeps it from going into law until right. we restore that title we have to make sure we get the bonding part right and i'm working extremely hard uh, with everyone in the transportation industry and agencies right. to make sure that we get it right We'll have an update as that bill moves forward. So the second bill was in the General Government Committee, and it had to do with uh, the Merit Protection Commission, I believe is the, the name of the entity. Yeah. So I guess maybe folks at home aren't initiated and don't know, but that is essentially uh, state employees and, and how they're hired and fired, human capital management. It's kind of a buzzword in the private sector. And So you're looking at making some efficiencies there. and Yeah, we're trying to modernize it. There's right. classified and unclassified employees in state uh, service and the classified employees uh, have some protections around right. the Merit Protection Commission. We're not trying to erode any of those protections, right. but we're trying to modernize how we hire and fire in the state of Oklahoma, right. how we deal with personnel issues, uh, but make sure the worker is still protected. So I have not had meetings with OPEA yet, the, the association that represents public employees, but I plan on doing that in the short order. Right. Yeah. Uh, working with the governor's office on that as well and, and hope we can modernize it. As you said, the Human capital management is more the way the private sector has moved. We're trying to align the way we do things more with the private sector as well. Well, I imagine uh, a lot of the systems and models and processes we use are decades old, and the way we work in society now changes with telecommuting and remote access and things like that. So it just makes sense to see if the government can utilize some of those areas and how we handle that. And uh, under all... The underlying thing, like you said, is protecting state employees. Yeah, and Representative Mike Osborne has been working on this for a while, so I look forward to working with him and, and trying to get this to the finish line. And we'll have more updates here on the podcast. Another reason why you should tune in every week uh, on your podcasting platform and watch us on social media, YouTube, all those good places. Um, so the last thing, let's talk about a big uh, thing happened. It got some ink, uh, but it was one of those things that people saw it on our agenda and, and – kind of passed over it, but it was a huge deal, and it had to do with health care in Oklahoma, and it's an issue that the Capitol, the legislature's been working on for a year, f a few years, and it has to do with uh, CRNA. So tell us a little bit about that uh, at home and how this is an example of how we can get things done around here working together. Yeah, uh, Senator Racino deserves a lot of credit. So if anyone watched my weekly press conference or press availability earlier this week, I was really trying to encourage the press to cover it because right, it is right. a huge deal. Uh, I got elected in 2011, and one of the first events I did was with anesthesiologists in my campaign in, right. in 2010. And that was an issue then. It was mm -hmm. an issue at that event in, well, I don't know, November or December of 2010. Right. It's been one we've been working on ever since then, but to no avail. And Senator Racino just uh, sat down with both the CRNAs and the anesthesiologists and said, you work out a deal, right. uh, and we will make sure we get it uh, legislatively done. And his leadership was very, very valuable in that. It passed uh, with no – and that's a double negative. It passed unanimously. Unanimously, right. Uh, yeah. Out of the Senate. Sam, the communi communications person, unanimously. <laughs> yeah. What was the BOE again? <laughs> no, the, uh, but the uh, it's a huge issue. It deals with scope of practice. That's kind of a buzzword, and sometimes it really uh, – gets really emotional when people talk about that because it's people's livelihood and right. jobs. But it's also about access to quality health care. That's a big deal in rural Oklahoma. It's huge. It's huge. But it's not just rural Oklahoma. Yeah, you're right. You go to McBride or any place around here where there's a surgery center and CRNAs are working alongside anesthesiologists and surgeons. And we needed to make sure uh, that we protected the medical field 
but also provided greater access and latitude, and, and that bill achieved that. Yeah. Now, it's not done yet. Uh, it went out of the, the, how, uh, the Senate uh, unanimously. Right. Now it's on to the House. House. Hopefully it will see the same uh, results there. We'll have more updates as that bill moves along. And while we're talking about health care, that's a big topic. We've talked about it uh, this year on, on every episode of the podcast. Just a quick update. Work's still going on in the Senate uh, nonstop, trying to come to uh, some agreements and, and make sure, we, like you said, access to care, quality care, improve all those things and help Oklahoma get healthier. We're working literally day and night, weekends as well, trying to come up with a solution. As you know, Governor Stitt, and the Trump administration announced the plan, Sooner Care 2.0, uh, u- utilizing the Healthy Adults uh, program created by the Trump administration. Right. So we're working closely with CMS, uh, with the Trump administration, with Governor Stitt, and with our House counterparts trying to come up with a solution that is unique to Oklahoma and fits our unique needs and gives us flexibility going forward. I think that in the coming week, not weeks, but in the coming week, we'll have a huge announcement on that, I hope. And uh, hope we can talk about it here next podcast. But it's all about expanding access, trying to make sure that we, um, in rural Oklahoma, but also underserved urban areas, right. uh, trying to get some cost containment measures in there, and trying to make sure that people who are on our Medicaid system have some buy-in right. uh, in, into it as well, and make sure that they make wise decisions. And, and some of the health care goals of this are really important. You know, redu- reducing the infant mortality rate reducing rates of cardiovascular disease, tackling some of these huge issues that really drag our, our overall public health down in Oklahoma. So if we can tackle that, that can make a big difference in people's lives and in, in the state government. As, yeah, as your life expectancy if you're born in, in Oklahoma is lower than many other states, and that's just unacceptable. Wow, that is, and, and we're working hard to address that. Well, we know you're busy, and, and uh, we appreciate you stopping by the podcast. Uh, uh, you heard it from him. We hope to have an announcement soon, so please tune in to the podcast, and we'll have more details hopefully about that next time. You can always find us on Google Play Music, uh, Apple Podcasting, Spotify, on our YouTube channel, on Facebook, and other social media. Please give us a like, subscribe. Let us know in the comments uh, what you think, what topics you want us to address. Senator Treat, any last words for us? Yeah, don't you normally tell them to email us too, like on deck at okcenate.gov or That's something? That's right, like email us yeah. on, on deck at okcenate.gov if you want to hear, uh, reach us directly here at the podcast and let What's us know. What's BOE stand for again? BOE, uh, Board of Equalization. <laughs> there you I go, got there it, you I got go, it. There you go. Thanks for joining us here on Oklahoma Senate on Deck. We'll see you next time.